Okay. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Reporting live. Reporting live from the home studio. Uh, if you're curious what's going to happen tonight, um, I'm starting this thing where I'm exploring like difficulties in the creative process uh, and what it's like to you know be like a normal person making stuff and uh, what's working for you and what's not. This isn't like flashy, like tips and tricks and a hundred ways to like crush your viewers and maximize your personal productivity and wealth and stuff like that. This isn't that. Um, if anyone tells you they've got all the answers, you should be very suspicious. Uh, but rather instead, uh, I'd like to share stuff that I know that um, has worked and I'd like to learn from you what uh, works for you or doesn't work for you when you're trying to create something. So that's the vibe. The mainstream is on YouTube, but you can join from wherever you want. So I think technically this is going to be a podcast and it's called Do The Thing and it's already out and already exists. Um, uh, I've wanted to do it for a long time, but I struggled over what is it going to be and then I realized I should just do it, right? So we'll learn what this is together. Um, well, look, I'm glad you're here. I'd like to kind of jump in to, uh, a couple of responses that, uh, that I got, um, about my question from last time, which was, what do you do when you feel stuck? What's stuff that works for you? Um, just cause I was curious, like, uh, you know, you, you don't have to be stuck to wonder, you know, what do I do if I'm stuck? Right. Uh, so let me share a, a couple pieces of feedback here. Um, I like this one. I, uh, I'm not going to say who who gave what feedback just because, uh, you know, maybe you don't necessarily want that out there, although I guess it's from public comments. But just in case, as a general policy, unless you say, hey, yeah, you know, please blast my name all over things. I'm not going to say who said what. Um, but I like this one. Uh, when asked about creativity and how do you make stuff and what stops you or gets you to make stuff, I think sometimes this is from a friend. I think sometimes I am at the will of a creativity ocean. When the tide is high, jump in head first. When there are no waves, maybe it's a sign to rest and absorb other people's art. It's tricky. It's interesting because it's, it's, my question is, is it passive? Is that super, right? Which is okay, but are you waiting uh, almost on, on permission from from others to to do to what you want. Now I've I certainly feel that way sometimes too. Like there's so much creativity. There's so many people making things. It's hard to have that in your head without judgment entering your head as well. As like is what I'm making as good as what someone else is making, or why should I even make anything when so and so is going to make it better, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I thought that was interesting. Uh, when do you recharge? Is recharging useful for you, or does it? Uh, fuel a cycle of uh, of comparing, right? Or to, or both. Maybe it depends on the thing, you know. Um, yeah. So like like if I see a movie, um, I don't compare what I get to do to another actor's career or, or whatever. I tend to just get excited and inspired to be in the movie, and I get really infected with whatever you know the vibe of the movie is. Uh, cause I'm a weird looking dude. So the career that I'm going to have is not going to be the career that like Jude Law has. That's just not my, not my thing. Right. So I get that. Um, here's another one that we have. Uh, this one has a couple of, a couple of tips on, uh, tips and tricks <laughs> advice. This is something that they do when they're, when they're suffering from like creative burnout. I suffer from burnout just from having a regular job. I bet that's pretty common. I know it is. Uh, I work full time and I'm exhausted when I get home. Okay, fair. So how do you make stuff when you're tired? How do you make stuff anyway? That's not easy. That's not easy at all. Uh, I usually try these things to recover from burnout. Number one, going on a walk in a park or somewhere. That's good. Recharge, get out there, take care of your health, right? Uh, I, I unfortunately kind of let my health go when I get in a real creative streak, uh, and I, I have to change that. So, yeah. Um, two, uh, I'm always working on a ton of projects. So 
If I'm particularly focused on one and I'm stuck, I take a step back and I work on something else. So if you have a lot of, you know, pots on the stove, if you will, creatively, right? That's interesting. Are you, I'm curious, if you have a lot of projects, as someone who's guilty of having a lot of projects, uh, do you feel like you're moving any of those projects forward in a meaningful way? Or are you in sort of an idle pattern? A great thing that I like to think about is the distinction between being busy and being productive. Am I making something, uh, really making something, or am I just busy? Um, I think that's a, an interesting uh, distinction to note. Like, when am I doing something that's going to go somewhere, and when am I kind of tricking myself into thinking I'm doing something uh, just by having a flurry of activity? And I know a lot of uh, dear artists, and I, I certainly have, have done this myself plenty, and I still do, um, but I know a lot of dear artists whose main artistic mission, whatever their thing is that they're trying to do, right, do the thing, um, doesn't move forward because, not because of perfectionism, uh, but because they're trying to do a bunch of different things in a bunch of different areas. Uh, and it's not that they don't have focus when they're doing them. They're hyper-focused on what it is that they're doing. And again, this is me. Like, this is totally me who does this as well. Uh, but it's hard to get any of them to really move forward. And so, for example, like I have, uh, I don't have the book on the shelf. Do I? Oh, yeah, I do. I have, I'm, trying to, I'm working on the sequel to this thing. Uh, for over 10 years, <laughs> right? I've been working on that for over 10 years um, because I'm doing all this other stuff. And gosh, if I could just get the second book out, then I've done it, right? Then, I've, then I have a book. I have lots of, I have the whole second season of, of the animated version of that. Uh, I have the audio recorded with the lead actor ready to go and a couple of other actors as well. Um, so I've made, progress in lots of different places, but it's not moving forward. Do you have anything like that? I wonder. Anyway, so that's, that's my concern. It's like jumping from project to project. Um, sometimes it's really helpful. Sometimes it stops you from moving forward in any meaningful way. Oh, I don't know. So if you have a, a similar affliction as I do, uh, and, and perhaps as our friend here does, uh, please uh, let me know in the comments. Um, because I, I'd like to know. Uh, one second while I put a memory card in, I would like for you to look at this uh, adorable, adorable cat. All right, formatting card. Fantastic. I think my other cat is destroying something in the other room. I will deal with that later. Mm hmm. Excellent. I have uh, from the Instagram, this just in, hot off the presses. Do something. <laughs> Do something weird and different from my normal passion in a way that scratches the itch of finishing something. Oh, like a shock to the system. Okay, this is good. So this is uh, coming in from, from uh, Instagram. Um, oh, sorry about that, Instagram. I messed up your feed. Uh, our friend here is talking about um, sometimes if you have a lot of different projects on the pot. This is good. I, I, totally, I totally do this trick. Uh, if you have a lot of different things on the pot, uh, projects on the pot, you, you finish one of the low-hanging fruit items so that a thing is just done. And you do get that sort of rush of like, oh my gosh, I've actually finished something. And that does feel good. That's amazing. That's one of the reasons I'm even doing this uh, uh, stream is, again, this the idea for this has, has sat and sat. I've had show art. Uh, I've had a website URL. I've had a, a subdomain. I've had uh, paid for podcast hosting just for years, just sitting on. Um, because what? It had to be a certain way. Then it's like, I should just start talking to people and, and streaming let's let let's have them uh let's teach each other what this is going to become and here it is and i'm happy mike i have that i have that feeling of oh my gosh i've actually just like uh finished something or, or, or started something yeah i get that i get that sometimes if you can take the easy victory for yourself i do think you should yeah give yourself that gift of something something has been finished i think that's really great um Hey, Cole, over in the IG, the, the big show's over on YouTube, but it's the same thing. I'm just pointing, literally pointing my, <laughs> my phone at the screen, but I'm glad that you are here. Uh, continuing on um, uh, with this person's feedback. Uh, seeing live 
theater or any performance. They say that it's very liberating and it sometimes rejuvenates their, their creative spirit. I totally get that. Uh, again, that thing that ties into, so we've got two, two people who are saying that absorbing other people's art helps them, right? It's like a thing that kicks the engine. So I think there's got to be something useful there, right? I hope. I think so. I think that's good. I think that's good. We, we learn from other people. I think that's really great. Um, finally, uh, I found being with other creative friends helps to fuel new ideas. I agree with that. So you find your tribe, you find your community. Let's talk about that for a second. So if you are, I know you've heard this before. If you are the smartest person in the room, if you're the most creative person in the room, find a new room. You should be a little scared and intimidated to be in the room that you're in when you're making something. There should be someone in there. It's a hand up and a hand back. There's someone better than you in that room creating something that you're reaching up to learn from. And there's someone that needs to learn the stuff that you know that you can reach back to. And together you create this chain, right? And you're all so much stronger. If you're in an environment where you're scared because you're learning from someone who's maybe where you want to be, right? Um, what a great, what a great fear, <laughs> like a positive fear. I, I, I like to think of uh, certain experiences with people as shared positive trauma. It's a dumb thing that I made up, but basically you're all together and you go through something uh, that is net good, and you're all better for it, but was maybe a little scary in the moment. And I think the right creative situation can be there. Maybe you're collaborating with an artist you've never worked with before. Maybe you're auditioning for something. Maybe you're trying a new discipline for the first time, right? Like a, like you suddenly, like maybe you do visual art or writing and you want to try music. You know, you can do that anonymously, right? Like you can put out stuff, but even anonymously, that can be a little scary, Right. So it's cool to be scared. But if you can find a mentor that scares you in a good way, not not in a like her, mentally hurtful way, right? There are people, there are people in creative fields who are where you want to be, who abuse structures of power, right? They those people will scare you in the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> I feel tech. I'm not talking about anyone in the chat. <laughs> um those people will scare you in the wrong way. You know, they'll use the mystique. This happens a lot in film. They'll use the mystique of their position uh, and their presence uh, and what they know and where they're at. Um, the sort of mystery of how did they get there? Uh, they'll use that to flatten you to make them feel better. Boy, that's, that's not, that is not okay. And you're often in, you, and you might be in a situation, you might be in a room that scares you because you're silly and you listen to what dumb Jeff said, and you find that you're in a room with something that scares you, but, oh, this maybe is not going to turn out to be a great experience because this person has something that they're trying to work out and they're trying to use me to do it. Um, and I don't feel like I have agency enough because of maybe, you know, like maybe it's a gig, like you want to do well in the gig and you feel like you've just got to endure this person. Um I don't have agency enough to to stand up for myself. You will get there. You will get that agency. If it doesn't come naturally to you, you can. You you can stand up for yourself. You can say this is not okay. And if if that's not your bag, you can just like like step away, disengage as much as possible, just do the job so that you can get out of that room and get into a room with someone who creatively scares you in a positive way, <laughs> right? Uh, someone who's better than you, someone who who you can who you can learn from, uh, and while you're doing that, if you only reach ahead, if you only think about what can I get from this person, if that's your entire motivation, then maybe you're kind of an asshole, right? Right? Or maybe at the very least, it's only selfish. It's got to be both. It's got to be both. It's got to be. I want to learn from you, and I'm reaching back to this person who also later can learn from you, but right now gets to learn from me because I'm here, right? And I'm one step closer to where they want to be. Um, 
I hope that makes sense. I hope it's not too rambly, but it's got to be that chain. You're looking for someone who can help you. And at the same time, you are seeing who is in that room that needs your help, right? Like, that's a cool thing to do if if you can do it. Um, and I know that can be hard to look for in the moment because you're like just trying to get through the thing that you're doing. Uh, I get it. But always be looking out for maybe who's the lowest status person in the room? Who's who's the newest in the room? Who's the person that um, you can reach out to? And they may say, hey, man, I, I don't want your help. You know, don't run lines with me. Don't whatever it is in, in acting. I've experienced that for sure. You know, like, hey, cool. No problem. Right. Got it. Um, but it's, I think you should try. I think you should try. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's just my two cents on that. I think it's, okay, let me, let me, let me catch up for just a second. I think it's cool. This is from a, a YouTube chat. I think it's cool to think about the way you creatively feel scared around another person. Someone is scared the same way around you. Food for thought. Yeah. I see. So you're saying if we're doing the chain thing, if I'm learning from someone and I'm trying to give someone a hand up, that maybe maybe I'm freaking them out. <laughs> you know what? I've done that. Uh, it, I have been aware sometimes where maybe uh, I was a little too uh, hmm, friendly or energetic for people, uh, maybe a little too direct sometimes. Uh, yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, you do want to be sensitive to how, how people are... Uh, in the room. But I do like the idea of that we're all scared together. That comes back to I think that shared positive trauma, right? Uh okay, great. Catching up real quick on chat cuz I think there's some some really nice stuff in here. I think anonymous art is so cool because it shows people you support it shows okay, sorry, let me get this right. Jeez, I used to do voiceover for a living. Whatever. What happened to that? You think I could read the language? I, I do speak English. All right. I think anonymous art is so cool because it shows people support you for your art, and the fact that you can blow up without anyone knowing who you are shows you have something special. Okay. Yes. And. Oh, you're going to hate this one. Um, where does art for art's sake fall into that? argument. You're right. You're right. It is amazing to know that you can put something out and people respond to it. Um, the couple of times that I have experienced that in a way that was disconnected from people, like strangers, when strangers like your stuff, you know, uh, when that video, the the cat video I did and had got linked from freaking Daring Fireball and I was suddenly like 11,000 people like, hey, this is neat. You know, that was an amazing feeling, right? I, I didn't know any of them. That was very cool. And I bet if you make something totally in the dark that's anonymous, that's also like got to be an amazing feeling, right? And so I think about art for art's sake. If you know that people are responding to the art alone and not the artist, that's very that's got to be a really cool feeling. And so you have that fun little secret of uh, I did that thing and nobody knows about it. That's kind of cool. Um, is your art worth doing? If it doesn't blow up, if we pull the capitalism and the commerce out of it, if you can't make a living doing your art, is it worth doing? I don't know. That's up to you, right? That's up to you. And it might depend on what it is. I mean, I'm not going to go act in an empty room, right? I'm not going to make a movie and show it to nobody. But at the same time, I would make a movie and show it to people and actively lose money on it. <laughs> because I think that maybe the story needs to exist or or something. I guess those are the gambles you take all the time as as producers. But like, I don't know. Is your art worth doing if there's not a commercial component? What do you think? I'm going to read the chat while you think about it, because that's, uh, that's a tough one. Okay. I'm going to close out this one. Just going back to when we have, if you have a bunch of projects going at once, 
do they all get do they all move forward in a meaningful way sometimes this is from the chat from the youtube chat from the youtube chat sometimes i feel like when i have a bunch of projects that i'm working on at the same time i don't give each one the same amount of love and attention and then all projects stop and nothing gets done. Aha! Ah! Achievement unlocked. All or nothing. All is lost. To prayers, to prayers. All lost. Okay. Okay. So, if I'm not good at this thing, I'm not good at anything. Gosh, I can't even finish the one thing. The small victory that we were talking about earlier, just finishing a small thing. Oh, I can't even do that. Right? Right? Oh, I've been there. It's terrible. What a feeling. I've I've thrown up my hands. And then I think maybe we go back. That might be a good time to do some of the other stuff that we've heard so far. Like, oh, go on a walk in the park or something. That's good. Where does your life factor into this, right? I'm making stuff. I'm making stuff. It's terrible. I can't finish any of it. Uh, I'm moving all these little things forward, which we'll come back to. I'm moving all these little things forward, but nothing's actually getting done. Um, I th forget it. I'm not going to do anything. And then what, then what do you do? Well, probably all that's left is you focus on, e I mean, either your, your day job or like your life. Boy, your life is important. Boy, your life is so important. Everybody like, it's like, it's all you get. So it's it maybe why you're like trying to make stuff too, right? You know, this is it. This is the life that I get. And it's, it's so important. Uh, to, if to nobody else, at least, at least to me, cause you're only going to see it through, through your eyes, right? Um, and when you get to make art and connect with people and someone responds to your stuff, gosh, that's so amazing. That can be such a wonderful thing. Um, but when you can't finish something, I do think you have to go back to what are the other things that fill your life? What are the other things that, that you, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So what's what's the water that you can put in it that gets you back to being strong enough to get back in there in that room? that you've created and, and make whatever it is you're trying to make, right? Because it's worth making. Whatever the thing is that you're trying to make, is it's worth making. Um, even if you think it's awful, because you don't know, like the person, once you make it and you send it out, it's not yours anymore, which is fantastic. Like, like I, I think this book is kind of terrible, but I love it. But I've had people really respond to it. And there's so many things in here that I would like George Lucas and do over, right? But I shouldn't. Because it's not mine anymore. And you might make something that will hit somebody exactly when they need it. And it might be some part of it that you didn't think was anything. Um, like there was a really... Okay, here's a fun story. Um, if these stories are terrible, you just, I'll move on if you want. But uh, it was at like one of the absolute... This is not a modeling story. But I was at one of the absolute like lowest points of my, of my existence. Um, I was living in this house where someone had just died and it was i had uh fled orlando under cover of darkness <laughs> and had moved back to my hometown and it was just i was single again and it was it was like life was terrible i lost like 30 pounds just on depression and i was the only thing that got me through was watching this dumb sitcom really really like great script but this fluffy sitcom called Better Off Ted. And it was fluffy. I mean, it was candy. It was, but it was great. And the writing was great. And it was like a balloon. And it kept me up. And it kept me going. And I had it on, like, repeat, you know? Like, all day. Like, for a long time. And eventually, the cadence of the dialogue and the, the rapport the actors had, it, had it, it made me want to write a script. And so I did. Um, and then later I was in a position where I got to pitch that script, uh, 10, 12 years later, I just pitched that script to some producers and a couple years before that, and they liked it by the way, and a couple years before that, and then maybe it'll get made a couple years before that, um, this dumb little show that got me through maybe, maybe the darkest period of my life, I was cast in this Netflix show. And I got to act with one of the actors from that show. And I got to tell her, hey. And I was trying to be cool because you don't want to be that guy. But I was like, hey, your show did so much for me. I know it was a fluffy little comedy. 
but it really meant a lot to me. And, you know, and she said, oh, yeah, it was a great show to do. And, you know, actor, actor stuff. Again, she's, she's out here, you know, and I'm <laughs> down here. Um, and, uh, and, but I got to have that moment. And I don't think that when ABC put that show out or when any of those actors were working on it, that they were thinking, oh, this is going to be like, like a change the world show. They probably thought, oh, it's funny. It's good. You know, they got two seasons and then it was canceled. But for me, that piece of art hit me at the right moment. And so you might be about to make something that's going to hit somebody in the right moment. And it, it may be one person. It may be thousands of people. You don't know. Right? So whatever it is that you're making, I, I bet it's worth making. So I hope you do. Um, all right. Blah, blah, blah. I know. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Let me check out chat. And then we'll wrap up. I know people have lives. Oh, we don't pick our comfort hyper fixations. That's true. That's true. Sometimes I think my hyper fixation is making stuff. So yeah, so that's just some thoughts. Um, if you have anything that like we can share with people next time, uh, Monday night might be a good time for, for me to start doing this. But if you have stuff, we're going to start wrapping up now. If you have stuff that uh, we could share, um, how you do things, things that help you, uh, any responses to like, is art worth it for art's sake? Is there art versus artist? Um, that kind of stuff. Or is there a project that you're sitting on that you have never shared with anybody? So last night, I got a very nice message on Mastodon from a very cool guy who's a musician. And I was just curious. I was like, have you, have you, has your band played shows recently? We don't know each other like human beings, but we know each other through Mastodon and YouTube and stuff. And um, and they're like, yeah, uh, well, we haven't played in a while, but I'm back in the studio again and I'm doing all this. And then he sent me two tracks and they're great. Like one is like like basically done and another is like uh, uh, what you would do if you go in the booth and throw together kind of a quick like jam thing as he's working out the song. And I thought, damn, damn, that's so brave. That person is so much more brave than I am because not only did they share with me their music, they shared with me their one piece of music in an earlier state, you know, showing someone your, your incomplete, uh, work, if you will. Uh, that can be so scary. So I'm curious, do you have something like that, that you're starting or you haven't shared yet? Um, for me, mine is for, uh, since I was 16, I have written songs and music, and I have a ton of it. I've recorded some of it. I don't share it. I just don't. Um, so that's my little secret project. Do you have one? I'd be curious to know. Uh, whoever's left, thanks for being here. We're going to say goodnight. And uh, I hope that you uh, uh, give some response for, for next week. Hey, some of this I'm going to turn into some animated stuff. So uh, that's a thing. And uh, we might have some people on as well that can like share music and or share whatever they're working on. That might be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, but I'll pull whatever is worth pulling out of this and maybe make some animated stuff out of your uh, questions and comments and stuff like that. So, okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to stopo la streamo now. Uh, I hope you have a good night.